Welcome everybody to the July 3rd, 2018 Board of Commission meetings. Uh, please silence your cell phones, pagers, and other electronic communication devices. Agendas are located at the back of the, the room if you'd like to follow along with the, the agenda. Um, at this point in time, we'd like to call the meeting to order and we'd like to do a moment of, a, of silence and reflection and then the Pledge of Allegiance uh, led by Mr. Commissioner DeSanto. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everybody. Next on the agenda is the review and approval of the agenda. Everybody have a chance to review? Shall move. Then move. Mr. Farber, you look like you wanted to say something. I have a substitute motion, or a different motion. <clears throat> Move 16A a ahead of 15. Mr. Farber is requesting that 16, 16A be moved up to 15 before 15. Second that motion. Seconded by Mr. DeSanto. Any discussion on that item? Okay. If everybody's okay with the changes, I'd look for a motion. Does that include to approve the rest of the agenda? Uh, yes. Okay. All in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Next, we have the consent agenda. I'll recognize Ms. Holly Hennies. Good morning, Commissioners. Holly Hennies, Commission Office Manager. For public notice, the Board of Commissioners uses a consent agenda to act on non controversial and routine items. The consent agenda is acted upon by one motion and vote of the board. Items may be removed from the consent agenda and placed on the regular agenda at the request of a board member or a citizen. Today's consent agenda contains the following items. Approval of the minutes from the regular meeting of June 19th, 2018. Approval of a resolution establishing speed zones on all roads within the jurisdiction of the Valley View Road District. Number seven is to assign the 2018 budgeted long-term reserve accumulations in the general fund as follows. IT equipment for 50,000, inmate transportation bus for 100,000, and auditor software for 40,000. Number eight is to authorize the chair's signature to the order of organization and incorporation for the Twisted Oak Trail Road District, effective for the tax year 2018 and after with the legal description as presented by the auditor. Number nine is to schedule a public hearing at 9.15 a.m. on Tuesday, July 17th for a general fund budget supplement SB 18-006 for the planning and zoning budget. Number 10 is to declare Toshiba model 4540C copier as surplus for the purpose of trade as submitted by the highway department. And finally, number 11 is to declare the 2013 Yamaha Rhino UTV as surplus for the purpose of trade and authorization to purchase the 2018 Kubota RTV X900 UTV from Jenner Equipment as submitted by the Weed and Pest Director. Thank you, Holly. Is there any citizens that'd like to have anything from the consent agenda removed? Any from the board? Um, number five. Anything else? Look for a motion to approve items six through 11 on the consent agenda. So moved. Second. Moved by DeSanto, second by Hadcock. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Mo motion carries unanimously. Number five, Mr. Faraday. For the record, I'd, I'd still like to see the minutes reflect what happened two meetings ago when there was a planning and zoning 
issue that was two to two tie. For the purposes of posterity, the record should have an, a note reflecting what transpired. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Prairie, I think we've got that item back on the agenda and we'll, we, with the motions that it could come forward with that agenda, I think we can fix that. So I'd entertain a motion to approve item five. Motion to approve. Second. Been moved by Hadcock, seconded by Buskrud to approve the minutes of the regular meeting on June 19th, 2018. Any further discussion? Say none. All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. aye. Motion carries with two no's from Mr. DeSanto and Mr. Farabee. Thank you. Next, we come to uh, our regular agenda items. Uh, we have a lien request from KNL. Would they like to address the commission? I'm here today to ask for um, the lien release and I have questions on some of my items on here, so. Okay. Do we have somebody here that could answer some of the questions on the lien release? Yeah. Yes. Kara. Yes. I read through this and the last part of it's, I'll read for the statement. Uh, on the back side, you say this is that Medicaid does not pay for anything while a person's incarcerated. That was from, I didn't send that. Oh, I that was somebody else. Yeah. Okay. I, Could you enlighten us on this? That email was from. I'm trying to look okay. at the emails here. Ma'am, from what from what I understanding, it's Lynn Banning is the one that sent that up regarding yeah. the commissary account. From my understanding, are, are some of these uh, the stuff that you're concerned with were were billed after you were gone? Mm. And some from like 2013. From way back, mm -hmm. I seen the ones from 2013. Um, Medicaid, I have Medicare and a supplemental insurance for my medication alone. So it should have been covered. Um, they ask that question when you're being booked in and processed. Um, the commissary thing, like I said, is if you owe anything to the county, you get any money on your commissary books, they take it or a percentage. So I've always had, I always had money on my books and nothing was ever taken. So I am kind of, I know I've put paid amount, like three, 400 when I was incarcerated just to be able to make phone calls, okay. paid it off. Um, I'm just, I'm really confused by this. A lot of them even come after I was in DOC custody. Um, I'm kind of looking for the sheriff's department. It put you on the spot, but I, I, I think we need some little, little more clarifications on how things are charged out with the Medicare. I know we have, uh, we don't receive when you're incarcerated, you don't, you not receive Medicaid or something along those lines. Yeah, good morning, Kevin Tom, Kennedy County Sheriff, and I've not seen this information yet. So I guess what I'd like to do is, if I could work with her on it and sort it out to see if it's all built correctly or not. We do try and recover the county's cost for incarceration, whether that's the commiss through commissary or you know, the medications or the daily board that we charge. We're trying to recover some of the county's cost, and that's what this is related to. But I've not seen the information. Okay. I'd be glad to work with her and try and sort it out, though. So, Kevin, how would she? Set that up just. I can set it up in the back of the room now when we're done. So. Okay. Make a motion uh, to continue this for two weeks. Second. It's been moved and seconded to continue for two weeks. Do you understand? Okay. You're okay with that? Yes. You can go through that with Kevin. Okay. This motion was made by Buskard, seconded by Hadcock to continue for two weeks so you could talk with Kevin and review the, the building. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any further discussion? 
Seeing none, all in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Next, we come to item 13, Planning Commission members' recommendation and appointments for two positions. At this time, what I'd like to do, we, we at our last meeting, we, we heard from Sandra, Sandra and Ron that addressed the commission. Uh, Jim was gone. Jim, did you want to take some time to address the commission? Uh, my name is Jim Coleman. <clears throat> And uh, unfortunately, I was called out on a family emergency, medical emergency, uh, last week, and so I couldn't be here. So I appreciate your patience. And um, uh, I would like to serve on the uh, Planning Commission once again. And um, let me give you just a brief campaign speech. <clears throat> uh, eight years ago, uh, when I initially uh, applied for a position, my wife asked me simply what my rationale was. Why do you want to do this land thing, as she called it? And uh, I told her I thought that it was uh, important work that um, would be interesting, engaging, fundamental to you know our community. Secondly, I, I said um, I've always been curious about uh, local government. I taught kids for years and about local government and. Uh, never did anything in local government. So this was an opportunity for me to see if local government was responsive, uh, if it was effective and professional and so forth. So I served six years. Um, my record over those six years will either commend me or haunt me. I don't know, you, you, can, you can draw that, draw that judgment, of course. But I did find that indeed it was fundamentally important work, far more important than I really thought it would be. Um, and so in that regard, it was uh, what I had expected. And I also discovered that local government was largely responsive, sometimes to a fault perhaps, but responsive and highly professional. So when I come to her recently and say, I'd like to once again serve, um, her question is interesting, important work, um, Local government, yes, I said, absolutely. But I did add one, th uh, one thing, a third thing, which I was unaware of, I think, uh, <coughs> when I first served. And I became aware of over that time. And I, perhaps it's the emotional nature of what the Planning Commission does oftentimes. They deal with an element, land, property, and its organization that is a powerful uh, element in people's lives. Um, I, all of us have a piece of land somewhere. And in the West, I think we see land as something more than a commodity. Uh, it's, it's, uh, in some ways, it's almost sacred. And so we have to approach every land issue, if you will, with that realization and understanding. Um, <coughs> when, when I go to my... Um, have a cup of coffee in the morning and look out the window, as many of you may in your kitchen, uh, you see a part, in a sense, I think you see a mirror of yourself. Because what's out there is a representation of a large part of your own emotional and intellectual life. And if someone tells you that that must change in some fashion, I don't think that's necessarily you know, bad but it is a heavy charge for anyone to do. And I think the six years I served, I became more and more aware that one has to approach this in a way in which you are sensitive to an understanding of how important emotionally that issue is. It's extremely important. It's not sacred perhaps, but it's damned important. And so uh, with that thought in mind, I would like the opportunity to serve once again uh, with the same motives that I were aware, was aware of before and with that additional charge in mind, which I think comes only from a certain amount of experience with these issues. Thank you, Jim. Thanks, Jim. Thank you. 
<clears throat> at this point in time, commissioners, uh, as you know, we did an interview process with this as, as we laid out. Um, so we do have a recommendation. There are several ways we go. You know, when we first started this, we we had like four or five applicants, six. So we had quite a few. So we did the interviewing process. We we went through that, and they came with a recommendation. The board has the decision today to either accept the recommendations as they sit, or they can make a motion and we can do uh, a ballot vote. I would suggest uh, of the three. And the winner of the three are whoever gets narrowed down. You take those three. Those would be my two suggestions. Unless Chairman, somebody else, Ms. Hadcock. A uh, ballot vote if we could. That'd be my motion. Mr. Chair. There's a motion on the floor. Is there a second? Second for discussion. Okay. Motion made by Hadcock to a ballot of the three. And second by DeSanto. Discussion, Mr. DeSanto. I would like to, if it's okay with Deb, I want to do the ballot vote, but what I'd like to do is vote on each one of them individually. Um, have paper slips, you know, three paper slips, or paper slip for each one, and vote for each one of them individually, eliminate them that way. And and then have Holly actually read the, the ballot votes. So you want to put, sorry, Chairman? Ms. Hagar. So we should put two on there? No, just one. Just vote for one first and then vote for one at a time. Okay. And either a yay or nay? Yep. Okay. okay. No or yes. Hmm? No or yes on there? Yeah. Okay. No or yes. That'll be easier. Yes. Okay. Everybody else on the commission okay with that? Sure. Not sure it makes a difference, but. Well, great. We need to vote on the motion with the understanding that that's how we're going to do it. One individually, yay or nay. And then Holly will read the results. Okay. Mr. All Chair, for, 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 Mr. Clarif Mr. Clarif for clarification, uh, she will read how I voted and how you voted and how each one of us voted, correct? Uh, I understand we were just going to do yes, yay or nay. Yeah. Yeah, but I would like the, I'd, I'd like the vote to be recorded as to what we voted, if that's okay with everybody what each individual commissioner voted. Well, if we're going to do that, why are we going to yeah. do yeah. ballots? Right. What does this right. say yeah. it then? Yeah. Right. I, I I, think the ballots, if we're going to do the ballot, we do it as it's supposed to be done. Otherwise, we just take a verbal. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm good with a verbal. So you're rescinding your second? I'll rescind my second. He's rescinding his second. So, I mean, if we're going to do it that way, one in, one at a time, then that's fine if we do it verbal. But. I don't. I don't know. I think that's going to take a while. Maybe not. Okay. Well, so we still need. So now, now we're right back. He was sending his motion, so there is no motion on the floor. I have a substitute motion, Mr. Farabee. That each one of us write down two names. And then Holly or someone say, these are the two that I voted for, and these are the two that Mr. Buskridge voted for. The vote should be public. The reason for putting names down is that way that I'm not influenced by you or anybody else. If we vote verbally, then it's you know, there's a chance of influ influence. But I'd like to have, I'll put down two names, you put down two names, and each of us put down two names, and Holly reads them. Whoever gets the majority wins, obviously. I'll second that. that okay. And and let's make some clarifications. When we, when we make motions, we do it after, or we can't give a speech afterwards. We need to make the motion, get a second, and then or explain what we want. So I just wanted to get some clarification on that. So Mr. Farabee's motion is to vote for two. You write your name on it. It gets read. Who voted for who? And it was seconded by DeSanto. Any further discussion on that? It's a long chairman. Ms. Hancock. I think that's fine, but why don't you just say it out front? You're not going to influence anybody. People already know where they're going to go. So, but if you think you need a longer process to make it right, that's fine. Okay. All in favor of that motion? Aye. 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 Opposed? 
Motion carries unanimously. So we need five slips of paper. I apologize, I did not anticipate. You have some on your right here. Yeah, there's the bag. Sir, took your paper. So to clarify, I need to write your name on top. If I forget. Thank you. <laughs> Do we need these notarized? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? <laughs> I voted for myself. <laughs> You're not on there. <laughs> Just to get to <laughs> <laughs> Stay on the Okay, Commissioner Buskard voted for Ron Smith and Dean Coleman. Uh, Commissioner DeSanto voted for Sandra Rundy and Mr. Ron Smith. Uh, Commissioner Fairby voted for Mr. Smith and Sandra Rundy. Who's Smith? Sandra okay. Rundy. Owen Smith. Yep. And Hadcock. Donald Smith. Uh, Commissioner Hadcock voted for Jim Coleman and Sandra Rundy. And Chairman LaCroix voted for Jim Coleman and Sandra Rundy. Okay, it looks like to me we have Sandra Rundy with four and we have a tie between Jim Coleman and Ron Smith, so we need to do another. I think Ron had. I had written down three. Three and Maybe. four. Maybe I marked it wrong. Three for Coleman. That doesn't seem right. Three. That's six. No, you. Total Badoomba. Can't remember your word. Seven, eight, nine, ten, two. It's ten. Three, three, and four. Ten. That equals. Mm -hmm. That equals ten, guys. A runoff between Jim and Ron. Yep. Yeah, correct. So Sandra Rundy would be appointed to the Planning Commission, and you need to take another vote between Smith and Coleman, please. Well, Ron yep. and Jim. Yep. You want us to just use sticky notes? If you would. Just take one. Okay. Yep. Nope. Let's keep it uniform now, Chair. <laughs> It's, it's a secret ballot. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. It's, um, these read aloud too as well. Okay, Commissioner Buskrude voted for Jim Coleman. Commissioner DeSanto voted for Mr. Smith. Commissioner Fairby voted for Mr. Smith. Commissioner Hadcock voted for Coleman. Commissioner LaCroix voted for Coleman. Okay, it looks like we have the appointment Sandra Rundy and Jim Coleman. Okay. Motion to appoint for the term starting effective July 1st. That'd be my motion. Second. Moved by Hadcock, seconded by Buskrude. Any further discussion? 
Seeing none, all in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion carries with one no from Mr. Farabee. And just for clarification on the on on the start date, the appointment date. Uh, Planning Commission bylaws state that the terms start effective July first. Okay. So we're a little bit off timing, but okay. we're going to stick with that date. All right. Congratulations to Jim and Sandra. Welcome aboard. Next, we come to items from the auditor. On off sale malt beverage, Rockefeller Lodge and Cabin. Good morning, Commissioner Cindy Muller, Chief Deputy Auditor. Before you, we have an application for a new on off sale malt beverage license for Rockerville Lodge and Cabins LLC. We need a motion to approve their license. That'd be my motion. Second. Moved by Hadcock, seconded by DeSanto to approve the new malt, lic malt beverage license. <laughs> Thank you. Any discussion from the public? Commission? Seeing none, all in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Thanks, Thank Cindy. You, commissioners. Next, we're going to come to items from buildings and grounds. It was moved up to ahead of the sheriff for 16. So I recognize Mike Cool and Sheriff Kevin Tone. Good morning, Mike Cool, Pandy County Buildings and Grounds. Okay. Uh, at the uh, June seventh meeting, uh, the board reauthorized uh, us to go out and look at uh, developing a professional services contract for Phase Two of the County Health Facility project. Uh, and uh, 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 I have done so, we, uh, uh, and uh, we have put together a contract for that. Uh, we are working with Upper Deck Architects. They are the uh, firm that did the uh, current project that's underway, uh, the initial phase of the project, which remodels uh, the majority of the building, but uh, uh, this is a, uh, in addition to that. Their proposed fee for that work is $137,600. $137,600. Uh, the cost of the contract and con subsequent construction will be paid for through a donation uh, from a generous citizen. Uh, anything that ends up being above the $1.5 million that's been donated to the county so far, uh, th that system has also said that he is willing to make up any difference there in order to see that this project moves forward. Okay. Does, Mr. Tolman, do you have any comments? No, I'm just here to help answer any questions. Okay. Is, any comments from the commission? No. If not, the recommendation... Uh, look for a motion to either authorize the chair's signature of any contract with the upper deck architects for phase two residential treatment of the second floor infield project in the amount of 137,600. Either a motion for approval of that or something else. That'd be my motion. Moved by Hadcock. I'll second. So seconded by LaCroix. Discussion? Any from the public? Seeing none, all in favor indicate by saying roll, aye. Roll call, please. We'll do a roll call. Beskrude? Aye. DeSanto? No. Fairby? No. Hadcock? Aye. Look right. Aye. Three. Motion carries three to two with DeSanto no and Fairby no. So motion carries. Mr. Chair. I take it that right. this is just the preparation of the contract. So before, and then, then it'll go out for bids. Is that the That's correct. Step? This is for the design work necessary to take it out for bids. So we will be back up before you again uh, to request authorization to bid when it's ready. <clears throat> this is coming out of the million and a half. That's correct. Okay. 
Next item from the sheriff. The CADP uh, new facility staff <coughs> request. Yeah, again, Kevin Dome, Pitney County Sheriff, and I think this got a little confused in the process. At the last commission meeting, it was continued to this meeting, and in the interim, I wanted to meet with Commissioner DeSanto, which I did do, and, um, but during the budget process, you voted on it and approved eight of the 10 requested FTE. So I guess at the budget process, I should have stood up and said it's 10, not eight. Um, so there's still two hanging out there, I guess, in terms of needing approval, but I thought all 10 were gonna be approved at this meeting, but they got partially approved at the budget meeting. So we're requesting the approval of two additional FTE out of the 10 that weren't approved. Okay, so the total would have been 10 and then you took three from the jail and transferred them over, if I remember right. That's correct, one on law enforcement, two from the jail. So for a total of 13, and this was five through that Department of Corrections grant, five under MacArthur. Okay. And so you, you made the motion during the budget process for eight new FTE. I guess I should have jumped up and said, uh, it's 10, not eight. Yeah. So there's still two there if you choose to approve them today. So. So these two are from, from what I see, they're from, from the MacArthur grant, so it's not gonna affect. Correct, they could be out of the MacArthur, out of that DOC grant, either one, but okay. the, the 10 were collectively funded by those two programs. Okay, so I'd be looking for a motion to approve two FTEs funded from the MacArthur grant. Correct. Okay. From the commission. Motion to approve. Moved by Hadcock. Second by LaCroix. Any further discussion? Chairman. Ms. Hadcock. So it's a total of 13, 10 from grants and three from moving them from law enforcement up to um, the new building. Correct, it was a total of 13 that were moved. Okay, and they're all fully funded? That's correct. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. And just for clarification, I think they're fully funded, plus there's revenue coming in of about 67,000. Mr. Chairman, it's it's in the 2019 budget we prepared. I mean, the, the revenue to support yeah. the FTEs is in there. Yeah. So um, it exists in the budget as presented. Okay. Mr. Chair. Mr. DeSanto. And for, cl <clears throat> for clarification, if these grants are not renewed, will be ending those FTEs, is that correct? Yeah, the, what I said previously was the five DOC ones go away, the MacArthur ones in two and a half years, I think we have to have a discussion about what happens to them if they go away or if we just reduce services at that time. And so, and then the other thing that's in the mix right now is, and I gave you this in a previous budget presentation, if we consolidate La Crosse Street into this facility down here with this donated money, we estimated we'd reduce our FTE need by three and a half in addition with the consolidation. So that three and a half, so really it leaves one and a half in float, I guess. Mr. Chair. Mr. Zander. Um, I'm concerned with the word if. Uh, if we're moving forward, which it, the vote so far seems to be heading that direction, um, I want to know we're closing that across street. I mean, there's no point in having two of them in operation. We've got way more than enough square footage to handle everything over here. So is that correct that we? Yeah. I, I don't want to be presumptive that the commission is going to approve the next step. Today, we were just approving the contract and we'll come back and ask you for permission to bid it out with some estimated costs and stuff. So that's not my place to make that decision. It's ultimately rests with the commission. So I was given deference to the commission on that. But I agree, it should be consolidated. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Mr. Buster. You know, Sheriff, since this is the city county facility, have we told the city anything about it? About what we're doing over there? And, yeah. and it may not be costing him anything right at the moment, the way it looks. But. Mr. Chairman, if I may, yes, we've been very engaged with the city throughout the process because they're going through the budget process like we are as well. So, uh, of course, our point of contact is the chief of police who relays it to the mayor and to the council. Anybody else like to speak? I, I would, Mr. Chair. Mr. Uh, Mr. Farabee. So we, we working on 2019 or 2018? 
both. I mean, we want to start these in 18. We built them into the 19 budget, and we're starting them uh, in 18. But we, have, but we have the funding in 18 to, with the revenues to fund them going forward for the partial year that we're in in 18. Mr. Burr. So last year at this time, we didn't anticipate needing 10, 12, 13, 20, whatever FDEs. We're, we're doing it now at the last minute, so to speak. Mr. Chairman, if I may. We knew at some point we would need to give consideration to FTEs. And if you recall at previous meetings on the MacArthur discussion, when you approved MacArthur FTEs for the state's attorney and for health and human services and a couple for us, I said I was going to wait and come back when I had that number more refined. We were closer to a timeline and knowing when we would need them. So that one we did talk about. The DOC grants have been in flux the last Oh, 10, 12 months, and that finally got nailed down in the last few months, so that's relatively new. Okay. Uh, I have sub substitute motion. That prior to increasing the city, county, alcohol, and drug program staff, CCADP staff, the Panting County Board of Commissioners request a resolution from the Rapid City Council setting forth its recommendation regarding staffing. Specifically, the Painting County Board of Commissioners desires the Rapid City Council's recommendation as to numbers and timing of any increases to the current CC ADP staffing. I'll second that for discussion. Can motion, I read motion, that, please? Yeah, motion's been made and seconded. Can I read that? None of us got uh, discussion on that motion. Chairman? Ms. Hadcock. So, Sheriff, how much has the um, city gave us already for this building? It's eight or 900000 yeah, The city put in $900,000 for the remodel cost. And now we want to ask them how they're going to staff our, sta our building and see if they're in agreement with our staffing. Is that... What Mr. you're hearing from this? Mr. Chairman, if I may. Mr. Chair. Yeah. The detox program is jointly funded by the city and the county with a combination of tax support dollars and then revenues from the treatment side that we generate some self-pay, some state dollars, some federal dollars. We're very engaged with the city throughout the process. And like Commissioner Hadcock said, they put $900,000 into remodeling the building. They're certainly aware of what's going on. And throughout the budget process every year, we primarily engage with the chief of police who engages with the city council and the mayor and the city finance officer. So I, I don't think there's any mystery to the city about what we're doing. Um, it's worked the last 20 some years this way. And I, don't, I guess if the commission wants to put another layer in there through the city, I guess it's up to you, but it doesn't seem like it's broken to me. Chairman, can I follow up? Yeah, follow up. Um, so basically, how much does detox cost the taxpayers? And, and again, it's in your budget of tax report dollars. Thank you. I, I think. I think it's I'm recalling off the top of my head. I think it's about seven hundred and forty thousand each city, each and county, and then the rest is supported by other revenues. So um, again, oh, okay. does the city council have anything to do with CCADP except being joint powers with you? With it, do they decide with you how many people are going to be staffed? Um, how many people staffed with Barry? How many people staffed with recovery? I mean, isn't that pretty much? Uh, County Commission that does that, um, our county does that through you? Yeah, it's, that's the way we've always done it. So, um, the that, commission wants to do it different, we can do it different, but that's the way we've always done it and it's worked. And I was on the city council and we relied on the county to tell us basically what the needs were for that since they ran it. So I'm trying to decide why you would go back to the city council and ask them how many people they think that we need in our facility when the sheriff runs it. So I guess those are my thoughts. Okay. Mr. Chairman, if I may just go ahead. I'll okay. use one of their analogy. We have our dispatch center. It's jointly run by well now the state, city and county. And when they want to increase the FTEs here, 
they come and talk to the county about the FTEs. We have to address the funding, of course, with all of our partners, but in terms of the FTEs, that request is made through the county. So I feel like we're doing the same thing here. Okay. Then Mr. Giuseppe, then I'll go next after Mr. Giuseppe. On a, not on this, this issue of this second, but I guess I, I know it's been discussed in the past, but we've talked about this so many times I've forgotten. How many, how many uh, employees are we moving over from La Crosse Street if we close La Crosse Street? How many will we receive from that <coughs> facility? I don't know that number off the top of my head. I can get that to you. I don't, I don't recall the split. Okay. It'll be three and a half less, whatever it is. And and at this time, um, correct me if I'm wrong, but the city's not paying for any of the of the actual um, wages for any of the, of the employees that we have. Just they just put in for the building to help pay for the building. No, that's not correct. the The city and the county each put in seven hundred. I think it's around seven hundred forty thousand of tax support dollars. Okay, and that goes to operations FTEs goes to the to the budget so okay yeah get a follow-up no I'm fine my thought on this folks is I think we need to move forward I'm not in support of the substitute motion I respect what uh, mr. Prairie wants you know he wants a resolution but I think the city and the county have worked together for many 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 years on this and the sheriff's department has run it and not only in subcommittee meetings, but also, you know, uh, the board meetings. I think Ms. Hancock, myself, have been on uh, the City County Alcohol and Drug Board of Directors, and I know city staff is on there and so forth. And I think we've worked together, and I think this would just delay when inevitably we, we need to do. Uh, this is a good program. We've identified the funding. You know, I mean, 10 of them are with their grants, and we're saving it. So. I think it'd just be delaying the process uh, of doing, I think, what we need to do. Those are my thoughts. Uh, any other? Mr. Chairman. Mr. Busker. Well, I, I, yeah, I'm like you. I don't have any problem with it. Uh, but, you know, we've already approved what, eight out of ten. So really today what we're talking about is two more. Yeah. And you're probably too late to do too much. And I, I appreciate George's, I have serious questions about this whole process, but I guess I keep voting for it. So. Any further discussion? If, if I might. Uh, Mr. Farabee. It might be well to know why I'd make this motion. <clears throat> we the county are, <clears throat> we are here in Rapid City, because this is where most of the people in the county are, and it's the county seat. But we're guests. We, the county, are guests in Rapid City. Recall a few years back when, when Sheriff Holloway was the, was the sheriff, work release uh, took all kinds of heat because of location in Rapid City. It had to be someplace in Rapid City to have work release. Where I'm going with this is that, that since we're guests, we ought to be asking the city council, the people that represent the Rapid Cityans, if it's okay to bring in 13 more employees, and it's not going to be 13 more employees for Boys and Girl Scouts or something of that nature. It's going to be probably some folks you wouldn't want in your neighborhood. And I think because we're guests that we ought to be asking the city council members, forget the police chief, the city council members and the mayor ought to be weighing in on what we're going to be doing over here. And this is in the middle of Rapid City. Why haven't we done this years, several years ago when this whole thing was conceived? We are guests in Rapid City. We the county. That's why I made the motion. The city council members ought to be, ought to be weighing in on, do we want 13 more employees? They're not taking care of. I could say the Boys and Girl Scouts or some other organization. That these are folks that they probably don't want in your neighborhood. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Mr. Fairman. Any further discussion before we go to a vote? Chairman, just Ms. Oh, just Ms. Hackart. We did when we did these meetings. We did have um, meetings and we did have city council people there. So um, we did vent it through the process through the city and the neighbors. Um, did we have two or three meetings? 
um, share over there because I was at two. Did we have more than two? Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Hancock's referring to when we started the process, we had two or three community meetings and represented by city council people from that district at the time. And like I said, the city agreed to put in 900,000 into the building and that went through their entire process through, I think it was CIP and then city council for yeah. approval. So I, I think their eyes wide open. And I guess I would argue that Rapid City is a, a guest in Pennington County. And I appreciate the thought from George, but again, if if you've been in that process, then uh, we were all invited to those meetings as county commissioners. And uh, I think it was, I don't know if it's just me or other people, but I can't remember DeSanto and, and Mr. LaCroix was there, but long story short, it doesn't matter in one sense, it just needs, you need to know that there were city council people there that know about this process and county commissioners and the chief and the buildings and grounds and, and a lot of people from uh, different parts of the city and the neighborhoods. So um, again, it was vetted and they do know about it. So I appreciate George's thought, but um, that has been done. Just a quick note on that. I was at one of the meetings before I was a commissioner. So. Thank you, Lou. Mr. DeSanto, okay. you're done. I think it's time to take a vote. Let, let me one more. My, this my, is your third time to speak, go ahead. Mr. Perry. Once again, <clears throat> since this involves Rapid City, the Rapid City Council, Mayor and Council should have it on their agenda and they should be the ones that are saying, yes, we're <coughs> okay with Paynton County doing what they're doing or no, we're not okay with doing what we're doing. One or two council members at whatever meeting, fine. But this should be on the Rapid City, the entire Rapid City Council, so the folks in Rapid City know what's going on. Thank you. Okay. The original motion, well, right now the substitute motion is to draft a resolution, have the City Council have a resolution for these two FTEs to come back to the Commission. Let's do a roll call vote. Buskrew? No. DeSanto? Aye. Fairby? Yes. Hadcock? No. LaCroix? No. So now we're back to the original motion on the floor is the approval of the two FTEs. Let's do another roll call vote. Buskrew? Yes. DeSanto? Aye. Fairby? No. Hadcock? Aye. Look right. Aye. Motion passes. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you. That brings us to item B, which is the Painted County Jail Expansion and Remodel Project. Advertising. Mike Cool. Mike Cool, Billings and Grounds. Uh, Bid documents for the uh, jail expansion remodel project are nearing completion. And so I'm here to seek board authorization to advertise for bids. Um, under state law, uh, advertising, it, there, we have uh, certain procedures that we're supposed to uh, follow regarding bidding. Uh, part of that is having a uh, opening uh, bids for building projects, uh, uh, facilities uh, uh, during a commission meeting. So I'm also seeking authorization or uh, requesting scheduling a bid opening date. Uh, needs identified under the jail study that was were completed uh, last year, uh, we found exceed our needs exceed available funds. Uh, the sheriff has been clear that we're not going to spend any additional money. We're going to utilize what we have available. Um, um, so we've been trying to find a way to uh, structure a project that we can utilize the funding that we have available to meet needs. That has set us up to do a, a, a project that's based on phases and alternates. 
Um, I guess to describe some of the components to this project, uh, we have a secured parking component to the project, a addition to uh, the first floor of the jail uh, over a jail sally port, uh, ground floor annex uh, infill project. That is where we're going to put kitchen and laundry, some additional uh, uh, staffing uh, needs in terms of uh, officers, uh, locker rooms and such. Uh, and, and finally, uh, a main jail first floor remodel, uh, which would remodel some of the office, uh, current administrative offices uh, in regard to uh, that adjacent addition over the Sally Port uh, to accommodate. This was all done in regard to the expansion of the facility in general and trying to meet the needs of the facility uh, uh, since it has grown and doubled in size, um, occasion and parts of this facility haven't kept pace with uh, the growth in uh, uh, size of what we can have for inmates. Mr. Chairman, okay. if I may. Oh. Kevin, in your explanation, can you give a little information on uh, the kitchen, where it's at, and where the funding is coming from, how you got there? And, and we did a, I'm going to try and give you the Reader's Digest version because we presented this, a very lengthy presentation when you approved the design to get to this point. So much like the previous project, now we're bringing it back to you, ask to be bid out. So I'll try and give you a, a shortened version. But when they built the original jail, and Mike Peterson said this in the previous meeting, you know, they sized the laundry and kitchen for your, that tower. Well, they added what I call the second tower, the annex. They didn't increase the size of the laundry or kitchen. Plus, it's 30 years old. So its shelf life is worn out. Underneath the annex where we currently park some patrol vehicles, that was always designed to be future jail expansion. And that's exactly what we're using it for. So that was set up for that. That's where the laundry kitchen will go and locker rooms for the correctional officers as they come to work in the break area. So that's we're using what it was originally intended for. You know, we, we do about 700,000 meals a year. So we, we do a lot of food every year. And we've talked previously about the vulnerability of our current setup with some of the sewer lines and stuff. You know, if we lose our laundry food service, that's a core function of what we're about. So that's part of what's been driving this. In terms of dollars and you know, the contractors watch these meetings to see what we're gonna say as to how much money we have. but. The project's somewhere between four and a half million and six and a half million because I give you a firm number, then that's what the contractors will build their, their price to. And we made the commitment before that we're not asking for bonded money. We're not going to spend any more money than we currently have. We'll use the funds that we have. Okay. Thank you, Kevin. Any questions from the board? I, uh, I would like to clarify. Uh, I do, do have a typo within the... Uh, uh, memo that I did write you, and after some further discussion, actually the the uh, the motion that I provided uh, suggested uh, is actually correct in terms of with the bid date. Um, but after having some discussion with our design team and, and where we are currently uh, in the holidays and and trying to wrap everything up, uh, I'm seeking authoriz uh, authorization to bid this on August 21st during a regular commission meeting, and then we would bring the contract back for award on September 4th. Okay. So after we review the bids, we would bring them back. <coughs> okay. So you're looking for a motion to authorize to advertise for bids for the Payne County Jail Expansion Remodel Project and schedule a bid opening for August 21st Board of Commissioner meetings at 11 a.m. That's correct. Okay. That's the motion they're looking so for. Moved. moved by DeSanto. Second. Seconded by Hadcock. Any further discussion? Any from the public? Seeing none. All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? George, did you say aye or 
I said aye. Okay, unanimous vote. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we come to items from the highway department. <coughs> Excuse me. Tom Wilsey, highway Tom? superintendent. Um, I, first item is authorization to purchase two motor graders off the Minnesota State John Deere motor graders off the state bid. This was carried over from the June seventh and nineteenth or seventh and eighteenth nineteenth meeting. Um on June 7, I brought forth a request to purchase two John Deere 772 JP motor graders. I'm still recommending the purchase as originally as originally requested. This was decided after discussions with my operators and my mechanics. Uh, we got a quote from Caterpillar, which was $3,268 less than the John Deere quote. Um, this is less than 1% difference in the quotes. Uh, to me, John Deere's quote has been out for a month. This feels like we went out shopping for bids, for quotes. And I, I don't appreciate that. That feels unethical to me. Um, the, th the thing I want to bring out about the, the motor graders and the discussions I had with my mechanic, head mechanic and a couple operators, um, one of the things that we, my head mechanic feels is a mixed fleet costs us money. You have to keep dual sets of oils or filters and different repairs. This costs the county more money in the long run. Also with breakdowns in other shops, if we had these machines in, in Rapid City, if we have a breakdown in Hill City or Wall, Typically, what we'll do is swap one out for an emergency, go out and put the wing on, take the wing off the broke down one, put it on the uh, operating one, and get it going again, and then bring the other, the broke down one in for repairs. We would not be able to do that with the Cat and a John Deere mix fleet. The original costs for machines are quite similar. Um, the Minnesota bid does a higher percentage of savings or of discount than does an NJPA, that therefore making the price cheaper in the initial. Um, Cat came back with quotes. I can't say where they changed the numbers, but they, basically they came back the same. But my feeling is that we should stick with the original bid. The original request. Okay. <clears throat> Any discussion from the board? Mr. Chair. Mr. DeSanto. Um, once again, and I said this a year ago, and I'll say it again today, there's only an additional 500, right around 500 additional hours that were put on both of those machines. They're temporary machines. They're not used all the time. Um, I don't think we need to be replacing machines when they've got 5,000 hours on them, 6,000 hours on them. They, they, these, the useful life of these machines, after I've talked to multiple mechanics, um, is 10 to 14,000 hours. There's no reason to replace these machines. I, I just don't see it. So that's my two cents worth. Okay. Thank you, Mr. DeSanto. I'll, I will make one comment. You know, I, I got a envelope in my basket today of a bit. I haven't opened it, but we typically don't do that. Um, it's supposed to be, any information to the commissioners is supposed to be given to us, at least on Thursday or so forth. So I just wanted to lay that out uh, on the table. Um, I don't know where the commissioner wants to go with this. I think there's been some concerns. I think we either move forward with the bid 
as is presented or we could uh, start all over. I don't know what, what your direction is. Can I make a comment here? Thanks, Tom. This is kind of anecdotal comment um, to what Mr. DeSanto said. I was talking with your predecessor, Lindell Peterson, and he was telling me about, he said several years ago, and we figured out it was probably the 66 blizzard when this area got hit pretty hard. Um, he said that they, the county, after the blizzard, sent their, their blades out, well, the ones that weren't in the shop being worked on, and every one of them broke down out in the field. He said at that time he would not let that happen under his, um, under his watch. That is part of it because these machines are not just blading roads. They are emergency equipment. If we have a big blizzard like, like uh, Atlas, they have to respond. If we can't 100% rely on them, that's just trouble. That's the only way I'm going to answer that one. Tom, the reason why I bring up what was said is because to be open and transparent, that's what happened in my box. And I think it needs to be brought out. I believe the bid process to the Minnesota contract was properly ran. I had my question through the deal. And I think, you know, once that those numbers are out there, it's hard to, I mean, you know what you're looking at it and it's hard to be fair. You can't go in any other way. That's why I said, I suggested to the commission, you either make a decision today to approve these and we followed the contract as we did, or we nullify the whole process and start all over. That would be my comments, but I'm looking for some guidance from this commission on what they'd like to do. Chairman. Ms. Hadcock. Um, number one, I think you cannot accept Caterpillar's offer now that it's been out there and it's less. That would be unethical. Um, we don't um, have people go out for bids after we already let them out. That doesn't make any sense. Um, to rebid them, Tom, what's the process in rebidding? I mean, once we already know the cost of them, we let them rebid again and see who wants to come lower. Maybe we'd get it lower. I don't know. Tell me how that works, Tom. We could relet it, or we can just delay it another year, and we'll do it then. Personally, my feeling is if we're going to not accept the bids this year, the quotes as I originally sent to you, let's wait a year. I have other equipment I should buy. So, Tom, just a question. So, we just had some people bid or someone bid on a, on a, a uh, whatever you call it, machinery. Um, so, then now we're telling them, okay, we're not going to do it now and that's legal. We can just say we don't want them anymore. We're going to wait for a year. Is that legal once we already went through the process so um, these, these were not bids nope. no. these were not bids okay that's what these, I'm, these that's are not what, this is you. not a bid no okay no. i'm just I, i'm I wanna, just asking yeah, Ron, that, I don't, that's what i want to clarify these okay. were not bids I don't these were stuff. quotes taken off of other bids okay so then we can we wait a year, another year if we want if we have to yes yeah okay thank you okay the only clarification i want two things i want to clarify is like Mr. Buskert had said, these are quotes. And another thing I want to clarify, what I got in my pack, and I don't know what it is. I, I, <laughs> could, say, I didn't know from it. it. So I may have said quote. I may not be correct on that. Um, I'm just trying to clarify the process of what, what you guys are going through. We did turn this down last year. You we brought yes. forward the motor graders last year, and we what, held out for another year, and now we're, it's this year. What so. I am looking at is if I only buy two motor graders a year, by the time I replace the last two, they're going to be 14 years old. They will be in that 10,000 hours range. I don't know how reliable they will be, bluntly put. We don't keep them that long, typically. 
Okay. So I'm looking for either okay. a motion to approve the highway department's purchase of the 2018 John Deere 772 GP motor graders off the Minnesota state bid for the total price of 444.290. Our I'll make that motion. Motion made by Hadcock. I'll second for discussion. Any further discussion? Mind if I have Mark come up and make a to see if he wants to make some comments? Sure. Good morning, Mark Shock, Pennington County Highway. Uh, I I just like to touch a little bit on the history with our motor graders in Pennington County. Uh, back in January of '96, uh, we had we owned 12 motor graders in Pennington County. Five were Caterpillar. Four, uh, they ranged in year from 1962 to 88. We had four John Deere's that were 81s through 88. We had one Galleon, which was 1981. One Champion was in 1982. And one Dresser, which was in 1992. So we had a total of 12 motor graders. Um, 75% of them were more than 10 years old. I don't know what their, their hours were, of course, but um, this was pretty much a maintenance nightmare for our, for our mechanics, uh, trying to stock the parts for this many different types of machines. Um, nonetheless, the knowledge of uh, how to repair or work on those machines. So it was made, uh, the decision was made at that time, the commission approved uh, that uh, we traded those in or sold, I'm not sure. And uh, 10, it happened that John Deere got the bid that year. 10 John Deere motor graders, 1996s were purchased at that time. Well, they, they were on a lease program at that, when we first got them. Um, after a few years, uh, it was offered that we could buy them, and that's what Pennington County chose to do. Um, since then, we've tried to keep motor graders somewhat under warranty. It's proven that if you trade them before the warranty runs out, they are, there's more value there, trade-in value for the next purchaser. Um, Mr. DeSano, you, I, when you said there's a 14 year life on motor graders? 14,000 hours. I'm, I'm sorry, 14,000 hours. Yes, I'm sorry. Um, I, I think that is very close and that's correct. But my understanding is how they work on trade-in and value is government entities get a 47% discount on these motor graders from a new price. Uh, oh, over a contractor or a private person. So typically, government entities are the first buyers of these machines when they're new. They will run them typically 5,000 hours right in that area. And there may still be some warranty left on there. So the second purchaser, uh, which are your construction outfits, your, um, they, that, that, that machine is, is good for them because it still has warranty. Uh, they may run it for a year under warranty. They can find the bugs or the bugs will be taken out. They've got good records of maintenance because of the, of the uh, government entities do that. And uh, so they hold value. Uh, the second purchaser gets a good deal because we got, or the government entity got a 47% discount in the beginning. And you're, yes, typically those people will run a machine 5,000, 6,000 hours. And it's starting to cost them more than what they want to spend. So they put it up for sale. Third buyer runs it that last four or 5,000 hours and it's dead. I understand that's how value works in, in trade, trade and value works on these machines. So that's what we've been pretty much doing in Pennington County uh, for the last 22 years. Um, and of course, you know, motor graders are essential to our, our 
our function here in Pennington okay. County. Um, as Tom said, uh, we, they are emergency vehicles. We have to be able to depend on them in snow, um, flooding, or what have you. Uh, Pennington County, on our, on our highway system, we have 481 miles of gravel road. Uh, that's a lot of miles to maintain. They're on an eight year cycle for regraveling two inches per year. So we gravel about 60 miles of road per year, which definitely takes a motor grader. We maintain them um, when we have moisture. And then for snow removal, <coughs> they can get through, with a V plow and a wing, they can get through a lot more snow than a truck plow can. Um, Mr. Chair. Is he, are right. you done? Oh, I got a question for him. Oh, okay. Mr. The v plow, the v plow is utilized for snow, correct? In heavy storms, we do have the v plows that we put on our motor graders. Are either one of these pieces of equipment equipped to have a v plow? The the ones that are pro, uh, projected that we no, the ones that you're replacing. Yes. They, they, we can, they'll have, a, well, we would take the scare fire. That's what is the lift yeah. mechanism yeah. for the V plow. Those would be removed from the machines we own now and transferred to uh, the proposed machines that we would like to purchase. So the machines we have now are equipped with that mechanism already? Yes. Okay. Front and back of, uh, of scare fire in front and ripper in, in the rear. Okay. Go ahead. Um, I guess just uh, in closing, I guess uh, I believe, you know, the long-term proven track record of our uh, good equipment and excellent service we've had clearly shows we've, we've, uh, we have a good maintenance plan in place now and, and we are being prudent with the taxpayers' dollars and uh, in our equipment purchases. Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mark. Thank Mr. You. Mr. DeSanto. I got two questions. One, um, Deer offers extended warranties, am I correct? Up to seven years, yes. Uh, how long? Up to seven years. So where, where are we at right now? Eight, nine. So they will not offer an extended warranty on these pieces of equipment I've, beyond? We haven't gone to them to ask. Okay. That might I'm be sure for the right price, we can get it. Okay. That might be a question to ask because I think they're probably between ten and fifteen thousand dollars, if I'm not mistaken. And compared to four hundred and something thousand, that's a big difference. The other the other point I want to make is um, I think Mark, I I take your point and Tom's point as well as far as uh, availability of parts and mixing up fleets and that kind of stuff. Um, but I know that just from the time that I was in the trucking industry from 1983 to 1996, logistics, as far as supplies were concerned, changed dramatically. Um, in 1983, it could take us seven to 10 days to get a load of filters in um, for our freight liners. By 19, uh, or by 2000, or excuse me, by 1996, we could have those filters overnight. I mean, they're, they were sitting on our dock within a day. Um, and I think that the, that the manufacturers and the, and the uh, distributors of these different equipment now have streamlined their logistics as far as parts availability is concerned and what they stock right here that you have that you can get run over to you on the same day you ask for it. Um, in a lot of cases. And so logistically, those things have changed dramatic, dramatically in, over the years as far as, I mean, I mean, you were talking back in 1983, it was tough to get a filter. Today, probably not so much. Would you agree? Yes, I would agree. We have overnight shipping and things. But um, two, we need to remember, we need them in emergencies. So that we do need to keep things on hand. Uh, our, our mechanics are called out for gel engines or, or they know the, any common problems with most of our equipment and we keep things in stock, you know, and, and we would do that if we don't have these ones. Sure. I'm okay. sure. 
Okay. Right, thanks. <clears throat> Any further discussion? Okay. Ms. Uh, Mark, how long have you been with Highway Service in Pennington County? Pardon, what was the question? How many years have you been with Pennington County in the Highway Service? Uh, the week after next, it'll be 29 years. Okay. Um, for me, he's been with us 29 years. I knew he's over 20 years. And he's telling us that they've been doing it like this for 22 years. It's not like we can't change, but he's given us reasonable reasons why that we need these uh, motor graders. Got it down. <laughs> They're service vehicles. Um, Pennington County is known for their snow removal and their maintenance of the roads, even in Rapid City or the surrounding areas for how we work. Um, for his experience, I think there's a trust there, for me anyway, that he knows what he's doing and, and they've been doing it well for a long time. So um, that's where I'm going. Okay. Any further discussion from public? Madam Chair. Mr. Barry. The government discount is how long has that been going on? I I'm not sure, Mr. Farabee. Forever? I know it's the, it's the huge. Butler, yeah. The Butler gentleman said it's been going on forever. Okay. That's a government thing that we get machines cheaper, typically. And that's all government entities. It's called a government discount. Yes. Okay. Jerry, did you have everything you wanted to share? I, I didn't mean to throw that out there. If you're okay, I just... Okay. I'm Jerry Heiser with Public Machinery. I appreciate the time. Um, we're not here to... <laughs> we're not here to make your lives more complicated than they already are, trust me. Um, you know, uh, our company has been in this community many, many years, a taxpayer, and we've got many, many employees who'd love to share in the county's uh, business. Um, it's our job to do enough of what we can do to earn that business and earn that trust. We're not equipment peddlers, we're equipment consultants. And I think uh, if you gave us the time and the opportunity to learn a little bit more about who we are and what we do, you'll overlook that cat yellow iron and you'll see what we're all about as a company. Okay. Um, my only comment is, is we truly want to be a part of the process up front. Um, and and I, I totally respect your, your thoughts and your, your comments on, on this today. Um, but uh, we have a lot to offer. We really do. Um, and I can stand here and tell you that our machines run for less money than theirs, and they'll tell you the same. But yeah. if you don't ever give us the opportunity to prove that and, and prove that we're really here to consult and not pedal iron, um, then we're just we're out there in la-la land, I guess. So so I do appreciate uh, the process, and, and I've, I've only been down here for a couple of years. I transferred from another one of our locations, so that's why I haven't had a chance to meet many of you personally. But... Um, I, and regardless of what you do or don't do today, trust me, I respect your decision. And we just want to be a part of the process moving forward. Thank, thank you, Jerry. And I, and I have to thank you for your persistence. Um, <laughs> having been part of a different process, you were on the other, Caterpillar was on the other end of where I was at. Oh, okay. <laughs> they wanted people from John Deere to get in, so I, I've been on both sides. Sure. But I appreciate your persistence, and I want to give you a chance to to say what you needed to say. Right, thank you. Thanks, Jerry. So folks, the motion on the floor is to authorize the highway department to purchase the 2018 John Deere 772 GP motor graders off the Minnesota State bid for a total price of 444290. That's the motion on the floor. Oh, substitute motion. Mr. Farabee. Move to approve one. Motor grader. Just one? Just one. <clears throat> second. Motion made and seconded to approve just one uh, conversation or comment. I'll make a comment. I'm not going to support that motion because this has been we're going on the second year, and I think the more we delay it, the more problems we're going to have. 
that's my thoughts on it. I'll open up the rest of the commission for any thoughts. Can I make a comment? Mr. I would side with you. It's either two or none. That's my opinion. Okay. Mr. Chair. Mr. Mr. It seems to me that one every year for 10 year life cycle would be the way I would manage. Thank you. Motion on the floor is for one substitute motion. Let's take a roll call roll, please. <clears throat> Buscrude? No. DeSanto? Aye. Fairby? Yes. Hadcock? No. LaCroix? No. So now we go back to the original motion of the two. All in favor? All right, let's do another roll call vote. Yeah. Buscrude? No. DeSanto? No. Fairby? No. Adcock? Aye. LaCroix? Aye. Motion fails three to two. So that means it goes back out. None for this year, I guess. None for this year. None for this year. Okay. Second item on the, my agenda is a hydraulic study for structure number 52305300 on Sonquist Lane near Johnson Siding. Make sure I got the right one here. Requesting authorization for hydraulic study for the structure number 52305300 located on Johnson, on Sonquist Lane near Johnson Siding. This substructure and superstructure of this bridge is deteriorating and will necessitate replacement in the very near future. This is one of our one way in, one way out structures. It serves seven. Uh, properties up in that, or homestead up in that area. Hydraulic analysis is necessary to determine what kind of structure would be needed for this replacement. This bridge is over Rapid Creek. Um, I attached a proposal by Groves Engineering for this service, and I'm requesting a motion to authorize a highway to superintendent to enter into a contract for a hydraulic survey and analysis for structure number 52305. 300 with a maximum limiting amount of $17,290. Chairman. Ms. Hadcock. We've done uh, bigger culverts and stuff in different areas. Does this have to have a bridge on it? And can that, we... That's part of this process to determine exactly what's needed. Okay. That, that's why we say hydraulic analysis. Thank you, sir. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Busker. You know... Maybe I haven't paid attention, but this is the first time I've ever seen us wanting a hydraulic survey to replace a bridge. My predecessor used to just do them without bringing them to you. And that leads me to my next question, Mr. Chairman. I'm, Don't we have engineers in the highway department? None that are trained to do this. What are they trained to do? They put together grading plans. They do all of our all of our construction management type projects, okay. and that kind of stuff. All right, thank you. Okay. Recommendation is to authorize the highway superintendent to enter in the contract for hydraulic survey analysis for structure fifty two dash two hundred five three hundred with maximum limit of seventeen two ninety. That be my motion. Moved by Adcock. Second. Seconded by Buscrude. Any further discussion? Mr. Chairman. Ms. Mr. Buscrude. How much do you think so, uh, this bridge is going to cost, roughly? My guess would be in the five to $600,000 range total. I guess if we're going to spend that kind of money, in a, we just will do it right. No. I can't put a bridge in like this without doing this. This is step one. All right. Thanks, folks. No further discussion? All in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Item C. Second on is for another hydraulic study, structure number 52909240. Also, this is a structure analysis, I mean, a hydraulic study and analysis. We are looking at this one, hoping that we can cut it down to a pipe but we have to do the analysis first. Cost for this one is 16,490. Our request is a motion to authorize the highway superintendent to enter into a 
contract for the hydraulic survey and analysis for structure number 52909240 with a maximum limiting amount of 16490. That'd be my motion. Moved by Hadcock. Sec seconded by Buskerd. A discussion? I, I do. Mr. Buskerd. I notice you don't have how many people this one serves. Do you have any idea? This is north of Wall. It's one of three roads that go north out of Wall. And that area, so it interconnected, there's farms all over up there. This is about, what is this, about five miles, six miles north of Wall. Farther 10, maybe 10 miles north of Wall. It, it's in, it's just on one of the township roads up there. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, Dan, looks like you got something. Morning, Mr. Chairman. Dan Richer. Once in a while, I forget to say public, but when I when I say <laughs> when I say discussion. <laughs> <laughs> when I say discussion, I mean everybody. Oh, okay. Uh, I just have a question. Do we still have engineers on staff? That's what Ron just asked the previous oh. on the previous one. Where was I? I must have been asleep in the wheel. Huh? <laughs> that was the previous question. Oh, okay. And, it, and Tom's comment was that they do, but they're not specialized in the hydraulic study, but they do for the roads and, and grading and so forth. Well... My question is, how come every time we're going to do a road, we hire some engineering firm to go out? And we had a surveyor on staff and never, if we was surveying, I don't know what he was surveying because every time you turn around, there was a, and you look at the contract and if surveying work was in there. So that, why do we have an engineer on staff, really? Because it don't seem like, unless we're going to just kind of resurface something or make somebody happy, we are one. Thanks, Dad. Mr. Chair. Mr. DeSanto. Um, just a thought for everybody to consider. How many of these are we going to need in the next five years? Pardon? How many of these hydraulic studies do you think we'll need in the next five years? Well, I've got planned for about uh, six structures. Six? Yeah. Six to... $110,000. Probably in, in the the next six years. Um, would it be prudent for us to have Tom get one of our engineers trained to do this? I am hoping to get this done. What's that up? is one of my plans. It to is move one of your plans. County forward, get one, at least one, maybe both my engineers trained in this. Well, this is in the plan. In I don't know the, the opinion of the board, but in my opinion, that sounds like a reasonable. Yep. Look, yeah. Looks like you got support for that. Good. All right. <laughs> Any further discussion? <laughs> Seeing none, all in favor, all, all in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? I'm teasing Mr. Motion carries <laughs> unanimously. Thanks, Thank Tom. you very much. Next, we come to items from planning and go up. Does the board want to take a five minute break? Yes. <laughs> Motion to take a five minute break. <laughs> It's been moved to take a five minute break, seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Oh, we don't need a motion to come on a break. Come on a break. We'll start with PJ. Items from the planning and zoning. Board of adjustment. Sorry. Oh, choose. We need to go into a uh, board of adjustment. My motion to go into a board of adjustment. Second. Moved by just. Uh, Buskert, seconded by Hadcock, the Board of Board Adjustments. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. We're in the Board of Adjustments. All right. Uh, good morning, PJ Kind of a Director of Planning Department. Uh, the only item on uh, the agenda for Board of Adjustment today is variance 1807 to reduce the minimum required side yard setback from eight feet to zero feet in a, on a southern property line in order to bring uh, deck into compliance in the suburban residential district. Uh, the applicant is un unavoidably out of town and asks a continuance to the July 17th, 2018 Board of Commissioners meeting. That would be my motion. Second. Moved by Hadcock, seconded by Buskerud. All in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Look for a motion to come out of Board of Adjustment. Second. Moved by, <laughs> moved by Buskerud, seconded by DeSanto. All in favor, say aye. 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 
opposed motion carries right of board of adjustment we're now we're to the consent agenda all right consent agenda the board of commissioners uses a consent agenda to act on non-controversial and routine planning and zoning items quickly the consent agenda is acted upon by one motion vote of the board items may be removed from the consent agenda and placed on the regular agenda at the request of a board member or a citizen the consent agenda for planning and zoning contains the following items Item B, second reading of Major Plan Unit Development Amendment 1801 for Deerfield Cabins, LLC. Approval has been recommended. Item C, second reading of Rezone 1802 and Comprehensive Plan Amendment 1802 for Eric and Heidi Hendrickson. Uh, it, Planning Commission recommended the denial, but the Board of Commission approved the first reading on June 19, 2018. Is there anybody from the public who would like anything from the consent agenda poll? Any from the Board of Commissioners? If not, I look for a motion to approve consent agenda. So moved. Second. Moved by DeSanto, seconded by Hancock for approval of the consent agenda. All in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Next, we come to regular agenda items. Yep. Um, item D is a request for a refund for building permit for penalty fees. Uh, this is for Richard and Wendy Johnson. Uh, during a regular site visit from a staff from the Department of Equalization, uh, they noticed that there were some extra buildings on there that they didn't have record of. Um, they let our department know we contacted the landowner. And uh, since that time, he has brought the item, the structures into compliance by getting the necessary building permits and paying the additional penalty fees. With this just building permits, it's just double. There's no additional $500 or anything like that. Um, per a June 21st uh, email, Mr. Johnson is requesting uh, the penalty fees um, returned in the amount of $508, I believe. And PJ, um, that's because he already paid, it's double the penalty fee, so that's just, he's requesting half of the penalties fees taken off, right? He's, it, the 508 are the is the penalty amount, so... 508 is the building permit amount. 508 is the penalty amount. He's only asking for 508. Uh, the penalty. The penalty. Portion. Yeah. yeah. You kind of, you kind of, when you say double the penalty fees, it kind oh, of makes it sound like you, he's double paid fee, it and then you're doubling it and he's asking for bo both of them. But no, he's basically asking for the penalty. And I'm not sure if he's in the audience or not. I'm, is okay. he? Okay. Let's hear from the applicant. Sure. Would you like it? Do you have anything you'd like to say? You got to come up here, Rick. It's Rick, right? Okay. Yeah, Rick Johnson from Quinn, I guess. The reason that I asked for the refund on the penalty fees is I didn't know that the building permits were even required. And, uh, I guess it's as simple as that. We used to have a business in Wall, and I always knew we needed building permits there, but I didn't realize we even needed building permits out in the country there. And that's, as soon as I found out, and I don't remember the enforcement officer was very cordial. I didn't see him, but I was able to talk to him on the phone. And, and we came in at our first convenience to take care of the building permit. And uh, then we found out at that time we had a, penalty that was twice the cost of the building permit and uh, I asked if it was possible to ask for that back and I guess that's, that's I don't have any other reason. Okay. So. Chairman. Thanks Rick. Ms. Hadcock. Well, no, hold on. DeSanto was first in line. He answered my question. He answered it? Okay, Ms. Hadcock. Thank you. Rick, just a question. So when, when was the um, grain bins and the pole barn when was that built? Do you have that information? Uh, it's not on. It's not in the memo that was written. Um, Another staff member well, wrote this, but she's in I can right go now. from memory, but <clears throat> I know the one building I remember was built in 2004. Okay. I think the question would be is that they were built after 94, if they were built after 94. And did you have these buildings? This has been your property the whole time? It has. And you knew you needed to get building permits or you didn't think oh, you needed I, to? No, for... that's why I said earlier, I didn't even know I needed building permits. And the contractors that I had hired never, ever said anything about it. And I had no idea that I needed a building permit. But I was fine paying the building permit, but 
when I was hit with a penalty, I thought that was a little bit harsh, I guess. And <clears throat> had I known I needed building permits, I could have got them when I was doing the construction projects. But uh, four bins, there are 30,000 bushel bins hold grain. And uh, one of them was built one year and two were built another year and a fourth built another year. So all of this took place over probably 12 year period. That's unfortunate because it's like, it's almost like you should go back and ask your contractors to pay for the penalty fees because they're building stuff without permits and then you're having to come back and pay for it. Mr. That doesn't make sense. So, um, Unfortunately, any contractor knows, I believe, my husband's a contractor if they need a permit or if they don't. So that's unfortunate that they stuck you with an extra $508 because they didn't do their job. So. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I, I would think it's the responsibility of the contractor to tell us that. But, yeah. you know, we we're in an organized township and I'm, and I'm kind of familiar with what goes on in the area and I didn't know we needed building permits either. Yeah. I would move to Mr. DeSanto. I'd move to approve removal of the $508. I don't believe that uh, Rick did this maliciously and I agree with Deb. Um, general contractors should be doing their job and not letting, laying it on the person they're building for. So. Um, you might go back and talk to that contractor and give him peace of your mind, too. I'll, I'll remind when you make a motion. Oh, my motion <laughs> is remove the $508. Okay. There's a motion. Is there a second? No, second. Seconded by Ferry. Further discussion? Yeah, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Buster. Do you, do you know, do you pay uh, property tax on grain bins? Well, it's part of the agriculture property uh Part of and the, obviously you would the pole barn. Have you been paying, as far as you know, property taxes since you built them? Yes. On those, all those structures? Yeah. So why didn't we catch it before this? Uh, do you, unless the Department of Equalization let us know, it's not a property that we needed to go out to. We no, don't go out to every not, property yeah, like they do. I just thought Equalization yeah. found buildings that haven't been, well, it depends on what their cycle, what their visit cycle was to that particular property. And they probably have been taxed, so they would have no reason to let you know. No. Up, up until about three or four years ago, we didn't have the type of communication we have with them now because now they're in the building, whereas before they were down the street. <clears throat> they invented telephones, you know. Oh, I absolutely years. agree. <laughs> I absolutely agree. I'm happy with where it is right now. Right now. <laughs> Mr. Ferby. If I might, I had a date on it. Ag property or ag structures are exempt up to ten thousand. So I don't know where this fits in that, but but there is an ag exemption for for ag structures. Yeah, it probably does. So, and we get the ag exemption on one property where we live, but we don't on the prop. It would oh. our structures exceed that by by quite a little, like right, anything over ten. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Why might, Mr. Chair? Uh, who was your con was your contractor from Paynton County or from from uh, Hawkins County or another county? There's actually uh, three different contractors, and they were from they're all from Pennington County. Wow! Every one of them. Okay. My Rick, my my comment's going to be everybody's had a chance to speak now. My my comment is when I first came on the commission, I I was waving these quite often. Because people come in and, and, as yourself, they didn't know or the contractor didn't inform them and so forth. And I've come to realize that if I keep doing that, it's going to keep happening. And we've been having these every every meeting. I bet you for quite a while we've had somebody wanting to waive a thing. And, and part of it is, and I've been in the same situation, is it's a civil matter. You know, those contractors know, and I know you're not going to get it back. <laughs> you can go after them and tell them that you have to do that. But I think I need to, to stick firm with my my idea that I'm not going to do it because once you go back and start telling people that we're not going to waive them anymore, we, 
they might start taking more responsibility and and getting those permits. So it, I'm not. I just want you to understand what, where I'm at as, as far as my decision on this, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Buster. I'm not going to bore everybody and tell you with my uh, my speeding ticket that I got because <laughs> I didn't know what the speed limit was, but they didn't excuse that one either. Yeah. So, any further discussion? Can I say something? Sure. Rick. I guess. Yeah, it would seem unfortunate that. I guess I came up today to, thinking that I could do this and be legit, and then I don't know if I'm a, the start of an example or what, but it doesn't seem right to me that I would pay that penalty, I guess. And I guess knowing full well that any building that occurs on our place from this point, I know that I have to buy a building permit, but I guess I would plead with you to 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 refund the penalty fee, and I guess that's all I can ask. Okay. Chairman. Thanks, Rick. Ms. Haggard. I guess the point's well taken. You had three different contractors that don't want to follow the process in Pennington County, so Lloyd's point is well taken, that if you had three different contractors and none of them got building permits for any of this, then obviously um, they don't want to follow the rules either. So they're not, like I'm saying, those contractors need to, um, if I were you, go back and have them pay the 508 if we decide to penalize you today because it's their job. You had three different ones. You just didn't have one, and that's not your fault because you're thinking, okay, that's probably why, you know, I didn't need to do them. But three different people that built stuff and decided not to do any kind of uh, building permit, to me that just, they're getting away with it enough that they're just deciding it's okay now. So is that it, we won't find out till later. And unfortunately, they're taking advantage of the people that they're building for because then you guys are the ones that are penalized. So they need to be told by you and other customers that, you know, you owe me some money back. You guys knew. You guys are contractors. My husband's done it, what, 30 years or so? County, city. He knows you, when you have to get something for a building permit. So if you did this yourself and you built these yourself, I totally understand. But these are contractors in Pennington County. Okay. That's where I'm going, sir. Thank you. Rick, you had one final comment. You look like you wanted to say something. Well, it just seems <laughs> difficult to think that I should, in the light of what else we do in our business, that I should be the one to have to try to enforce the regulations to the contractors. Understood. Motion on the floor is to waive the, the <coughs> penalty fees. Mr. Chair, one more comment. Yeah, if, Mr. Farabee. If all the counties in the state had the same rules that Painting County does, then I would I'd be probably less sympathetic to Mr. Johnson, but uh, most counties don't require anything. Fall River County doesn't even have planning and zoning, period. So anyway, uh, obviously I'm on Mr. Johnson's side. Okay, motion on, like I said, the motion on the floor is to approve the refund of the penalty fees in the amount of 508. Further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. aye. Was there three no's? Yes. So that motion dies. So it was denied. Okay, thank you. Do we go back to the original? There was no original motion. No. No, we're good? Okay. Just for clarification. Item E. Good morning. Frank Weiss, Planner 2. Item E is Minor Plat 1810 and Subdivision Regulations Variance 1803 for Kerry and Sabrina Johnson. Uh, Planning Commission recommended denial of subdivision regulation variance and the approval of the minor plat with 11 conditions. This was carried over from the June 7th meeting due to a tied vote. Uh, 
uh, current recommendation still still holds. Um, the applicant is here in the audience. If you have any questions, the the request to waive the subdivision regu regulations variance was because they had re uh, constructed a turnaround near the house rather than at the base of the driveway. Um, he can answer any questions and describe the topography and siting of that if necessary. Okay. Chair. Let's hear from Chair. Ms. Adcock. I have a motion so we can put it on the floor with the staff recommendation. Okay. Not the Planning Commission's recommendation. You have a motion, you said? Staff okay. recommendation. Staff, you want me to read it? Sure. Staff recommends to strike from the minutes the request of Hadcock and the seconder to withdraw the original motion and a subsequent motion of denial of subdivision regulation variance SV 1803 and the approval of minor plat slash PL 18 10. Yes, sir. That's the motion. Staff, is that what you rec recommend? Correct. Okay. Discussion on the matter? Oh, I'll second that for discussion. First of all, I'll make a comment. That was an error on the chair's part. I apologize for that. Uh, and I happen to bring you back here through this again. Uh, two, two light of a vote. We should have continued on. You would have been back here today and we separated it around. Mr. Ferrer, we caught this and, and so we're redoing it. That's why we requested you to come back. No more mistakes, so, Chair. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Just wanted to express my apologies to you and let you know what was going on and so forth. Uh, part of the recommendation on this is going to be to separate it. So it's one thing that we go on in the future. Hopefully we can separate this because the intention was to help you move forward with your project. And we should have probably just separated that out and That's we could have accomplished it. Okay. So <clears throat> motion on the floor is, as I stated, for motion one. Is there any discussion? Yeah, I, hold, I've kind of got mixed up here. Where, what is the motion again? The motion is to strike the minutes, <clears throat> strike from the minutes the request of Hadcock and the seconder to withdraw the original motion and the subsequent motion of denial of subdivision regulation variance SB 1803 and approval of the minor plat PO. Because what we did is we, we voted on them together. And so the chairman shouldn't have accepted the withdrawal and we shouldn't have voted on it. So we need to strike that to correct it. Been moved and seconded, right? Yeah, it's been moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? I have to abstain because I wasn't part of it. Okay. Mr. Four ayes and one abstention from Mr. Ferry. The second part of this motion could be to approve or deny the minor plat with 11, 11 conditions. We, we're going to separate these two. Yes, that'd be best to separate them and give them each the okay. vote. So let me explain that. There's two, two possible motions that are going to come up if you guys want to separate them. One is to approve the plat with 11 conditions, and then we need another motion to approve or deny subdivision regulation variance 03 and to waive the requirements of record, recording the turnaround plat. That was what we had problems with on our last meeting was the recording of the turnaround plats, not so much the uh, minor plat itself. So, Chairman, we're approving the first part. This would the be minor the first plat. motion. Okay, that'd be my motion, the minor plat approval. It's been moved and seconded to approve the minor plat 18-10 with 11 conditions. All in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Abstaining? Oh. You're not abstaining from that one? No. Oh. Okay. So you you okay with that one? You okay. I didn't hear him, so I was I didn't hear him. <laughs> Got a hearing Third, aid. Third. Mm -hmm. Third part is approve or deny the subdivision division regulation variance S303 the way the requirements of recording the turnaround on the plant. 
And this was the one we had problems with. So did you want to plea your case again? Give you... um, good morning, Kerry Johnston, Rapid City. Um, as I had told you folks before in the previous meeting that we had, we did construct a turnaround up by the house that is more than adequate for a fire truck, ambulance, any emergency vehicle as far as, as I am concerned and my contractor is concerned. I have a 44 foot camper that I pull in there, I turn around in there, no problem. Um, I've spent several amounts of money doing this. Um, I've even hired a uh, tree cutting crew to widen the road going back to my place um, in order to get bigger vehicles in there. Um, we're building a 40 by 64 pole barn. We were able to get 44 foot trusses in there with no problem. Um, I just, I don't see any reason to take up as much room on my lot as you guys, are, as the county is requesting for the turnaround. It just doesn't fit on my lot. Um, and why I should be responsible for the other eight houses back there just because I wanna turn three lots into one, I guess would be my argument. Okay, Gary. Staff? Uh, staff had recommended denial of the subdivision regulation variance um, to be sure that a turnaround was dedicated on the plat. Um, obviously, as um, included in your packet, the, the turnaround based off of the 16-foot road that exists uh, doesn't fit very well. But if the existing uh, turnaround that has been constructed at the near the near, closer to the house was dedicated for emergency vehicles that would suffice so staff's recommendation is just to have it dedicated they're not asking them to make it bigger or wider yes yeah, staff staff recommended uh, denial of the subdivision regulations variance in order to have the turnaround dedicated somewhere not necessarily um, as drawn out in your packet because the 16 foot road that's currently existing there does not does not meet the requirements of the turnarounds it listed in the, in the regulations okay comments from the commission mr. chair mr. DeSanto so by approval or not approving of the variance we're gonna allow him to just do it the way it's done so it doesn't cost him any additional money and he doesn't have to is that correct um, if that can be dedicated on the plat what has been constructed already I, that, that'd be my mr. chairman isn't the big argument you didn't you want to pay to change a plant. I mean, add it onto a plant, which will cost some money. Likely, yes. I don't know the cost for a surveyor to do that, but. Um, I mean, that's obvious. Is he, you already agree that what he done was okay. It's adequate. It's just we got to draw it on the map now. It right. would be, yeah, correct. I mean, yeah, I haven't seen the new turnaround of this size. If it's as big as stated, that would be should be suitable for emergency vehicles. But unless it's something's dedicated on the plat, there's no guarantee that it will stay there um, throughout the life of this property. Okay. Chairman, I'll, I'll just make one comment before you go back. That I think that was my biggest concern on the first quarter. I understand uh, Gary's position on this all the work that he's having to do and so forth but my problem is is what happens if 20 years from now you sell and someone decides to put a gate there yeah, th that was my concern but and I understand that but this has been this way for 40 some years 50 some years and and now that I want to take my three lots and turn them into one it's coming onto my shoulders and I don't believe that's fair okay to me Ms. Hadcock, you had another comment? Chairman, or Chairman, um, Frank, can you show me the three lots where they're at and where the turnaround is? Uh, so these are the uh, three lots. The turnaround, um, I believe, has been built here on the four lot 22 where the house has been built. Okay. So the road comes in, Frank, the road comes in and then it goes to the right on this of that lot then goes into lot let's see, 20, 22, 22. in the north. So is there anything behind there where there can be more houses built? Uh, the rest of the surrounding, surrounding the neighborhood, I believe, is forest service property. The north side of my property is all forest service. 
I guess that's my point. So there isn't going to be any more people building there. Um, if someone's going to turn around and if, if the fire department needs to have some room, they're going to go in his property anyway. And he's going to want his house saved and everything else too. So again, I'll say, um, I don't think it has to be on a map. And he did say it made it big enough and nobody else is going to build on his property. Okay. So, so t is there a motion made? Um, I, I spoke, a, but maybe the, Mark. I think a, the appropriate motion that you're probably looking for is probably to approve the subdivision regulation variance SB 1803 to weigh the requirement of recording the turnaround on the plat. Yes, sir. That's so my motion. Second. Second. Motion made by Hagock, seconded by DeSanto. Further comments? Seeing none. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. You don't. Thank you. So it was worth coming back. Well, uh, it's been a process. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Gary. <coughs> Thanks for your time. <coughs> Next, we come to our. Have they made it in yet? Provisional Seventh Judicial Circuit Court. I haven't seen the judge yet. Oh. Oh, I don't see the judge yet. The 50s here. If you want to maybe do item B first. Tell me discounted at 3000 or 300 yeah, <laughs> Yeah, he's gonna get right in there. So nineteen. Ooh. Yeah, go ahead, Cindy. Commissioners, you commissioners, you okay with Cindy going forward? Yes. Nineteen A yes. or nineteen B, Chairman? Nineteen B. Yes. Thank you. Thanks, Cindy. I, consensus is you're up. That's the consensus. That's okay. the consensus. We can do that. Um, so we did make the changes, the motions that were made the other day mm -hmm. to the budget. And I know you guys all have a copy of that in your packets. The orange highlighted areas are the ones that were changed, which then um, brought it down to, um, in order to keep our reserves at 19%, um, we could reduce the tax burden cut to 1.97%. And what that will do is take the county consolidated levy, it will reduce it by $2.30 per 100,000. County fire levy will increase by 30 cents per 100,000. And that's with um, using the CPI on that. The library will reduce by 90 cents per 100,000 and an organized road fund will be a reduction of 90 cents per 100,000. Okay. Did you have any questions? I... No questions. I think we were trying to, well, I'll ask the board, but we were trying to keep all budget concerns discussions to the special meeting. But I think what I'd like to see is some direction from the board if they'd like that number to give the staff direction. So when we have the meeting on the 17th, they know they've either made the cuts and they need to plead their, their case to us on why we should have that discussion at that time. That's my suggestion, Cindy. Um, but we'll, we'll kind of see where the board wants to go with this because we still haven't heard from the other two, but right. you know, I think they've had 
the opportunity to look at this just as much as we have and all the other departments have also. But one, one thing I did notice on the second sheet, though, Cindy, was <clears throat> I thought underneath buildings and grounds, we'd made the motion to go to two. The numbers, the cost looks about right for two, but just the under, column of the FTEs yeah. didn't get changed. Yeah. Yes, yeah. that is correct. That's the only thing I, I mean, the, the amounts, I think your numbers are good, but it's just the, yep. yeah. That is correct. State's attorney, did we do one? And I was going to say it, that is also the case on the state's, state's attorney's, attorney's line, if one I remember two. right. Yes, yeah, sir. that should have been changed to one also. But the numbers have changed, Miss Cindy? The the amounts were changed. It just was the number of FTEs over in the right-hand column that were yeah. not changed. Thank you, Miss Cindy. Okay. Well, I'd, so I'd look for Mr. Busker. It looked like you were going to say something. No. Are you sure you aren't here? <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, I'm kidding. I, I guess it, since we're we've got one more budget session next week, don't we? So I am I will save any motions till then. But I'm going to prepare everybody. So um, the eight hundred thousand dollars has that uh, buildings and grounds wants for whatever they think they want to do, I'm, I'm not happy with. In past years, I've we've gotten uh, estimates of what they're going to spend it for. Now this year, it's oh, we, whatever we want to spend it for. So either I want to take some money away and put it into our reserve account, or, and or, and I might do that too, uh, before the, to, to, if they want $800,000, fine, uh, I, I would vote to give them that. But I'd also vote that uh, before they spend any of it, they come back to this board and get permission to, so we know what they're spending Absolutely. it on. Uh, we, we, we do that on many different things. Uh, uh, you know, George especially is, well, I'm not, well, I don't want to give him a blank check. I don't want to give him a blank check. That's what this is. And, and you know, they've always spent it for good things for our buildings, basically. They put new roofs on and, and new air conditioners and stuff. But I think we also, for that kind of money, I mean, that's nearing a million dollars. We should have a little say so on uh, where they're spending it. I'm not going to because I'm not going to be here, but you know, the and rest of the rest you should. The list was given to you this morning. I laid it on your diocese up there. So okay. the list was just received today. Uh, I see. Okay. And we'll, um, we'll go through that. Yeah, I, I still probably will make that motion. So. Okay, thank you. Yeah. So, thank you, Rod. Any other discussion? So, Chairman. So, do we want to make the motion to do the 1.97% cuts, and then the people, at least they know, you know, in their columns, what's going to be cut, and then they can come play their case instead of that day say, okay, we're taking the 1.97, then have to have another meeting for all the people that we're going to cut. I think it's only fair to say that you know, give them a heads up. That's where we're going to at a starting point. That that was my question at the beginning of this. I think staff needs direction at this point to come back at the 17th meeting to be able to say, you know, come back to us at this time and date. This is what it is. If you can't live with it, tell us why. Okay. We make the motions to adjust or not, keep the same, whatever we need to do. That would be my recommendation. Okay, so that'd be my my motion is to start with the one point nine seven, with the reserves at nineteen percent, and then that way at least they have a heads up. Okay, I'll quit talking. That was my motion. I'll second that. Okay, so the motion on the floor is to reduce tax burden of the budget by one point nine seven percent, and to raise cash reserve goals up to nineteen percent. Okay, that's the motion on the floor. So, Any, Chairman. In the discussion, Ms. Hagan. So the bottom line is, is anybody affected by that can come in on our budget on next Tuesday, right? Exactly. Discussion and say why or why not that that cut is not going to work for them or what they have to cut and et cetera. Or vice versa. Our Thank commission you. can work. Thank you, Mr. sir. Chairman. And Most just for everybody's knowledge, that, that uh, 1.97, 
we'll cut our budget by one point one million dollars, which is actually pretty good, pretty good amount. Mm. Okay. Discussion looks uh -oh, like. Oh, here comes some money. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, if I may, Mr. Kevin Tone, Pending County Sheriff. I'm not going to be here on the 10th. Brian's going to cover the meeting, but we're good with the budget as it is. So from our perspective, we're good to go. Okay. What'd you say? Just kidding. <laughs> we're good to go. It's on video and audio. <laughs> Did we get him on tape? <laughs> okay, folks. Thanks, so uh, will you have a motion on the floor? Yeah, I got it. Okay, let's go. Uh, let's do a roll call vote, please. Okay. Buscrew? Aye. DeSanto? Aye. Fairby? Yes. Hadcock? Aye. LaCroix? Aye. Unanimous. Well, that looks like the direction we need to go. Okay. Send you. Thank send you, Miss Cindy. You can get that prepared. Um, so it looks like we're st probably still waiting for the courts. Maybe. He's, maybe he we. should want to be here any minute. <laughs> Anything else for budget? We, well, we have two options. We could go to the Mystic if the person wants to move ahead. We'd need a motion to move items. No, I don't know if we can do that. Do we, Holly, how do we do 19A if we want to delay and move forward on 2021, 20, 22? Just make a motion to table 19A for the moment. That'd be my motion. Second. It's been moved and seconded to table 19A. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. That brings us to item number 20. And this is the Mystic Road dust issue. I'll give a little background on this. I got the. Did I jump to it? Yeah. Mystic Road dust issue. And what had happened, folks, is we'd gotten an email from a constituent that he requested that his email be, be read at the county commission meeting. And so what we did is we put it on the agenda, and I think you were going to read it, wasn't you, Emily? Directed, yes, sir. I would appreciate it if you read it, please. This is from Mr. Kenneth Hargens. Um, I am Mr. Kenneth Hargens. I have appeared before the county commissioners previously with no favorable response from the commissioners. As my time appearing before the commission has been a waste of my valuable time, I am sending this letter in email form. I own the property at 23470 Mystic Road. This is a gravel road off of the paved Deerfield Highway that leads to the old town site of Mystic. My place is called Redfern and is over a mile from the Deerfield Road. Redfern was a long rail, excuse me, Redfern was a railroad siding and is a prominent feature of the Mickelson Trail. Only a lower, short portion of the road leading to my place is paved. The problem we have out there is the horrendous dust that is caused by the hundreds of vehicles that travel this road every day. These vehicles are cars, literally hundreds of motor motorcycles and ATVs, cars with trailers, cars with bicycles on them, cars with bicycles in trailers, logging trucks, dump trucks, UPS trucks, FedEx trucks, livestock trucks. Vehicles pulling horse trailers, vehicles pulling recreational trailers, trucks associated with gold drilling, etc. For the entire distance of my property bordering the Mystic Road is a straight stretch. When the above mentioned vehicles reach this straight stretch, they immediately hit their throttle and I know that some hurl down this road at 70 miles per hour or better. There are six private property approaches on this short distance of the gravel Mystic Road. A vehicle traveling at 60 miles per hour on this road is covering 88 feet per second. The other day, I was nearly struck by a speeding pickup as I entered the road because he was traveling so fast that he covered a short distance in a very short amount of time. As you know, stopping on gravel is no easy task. In addition, out of control vehicles have run through my barbed wire fence. What I am relating is that in addition to the vehicle speeds, the huge dust is a health hazard is a hazard to health and well-being. I feel it is only a matter of time. I feel it is only a matter if time before a serious accident occurs on this portion of Mystic Road. This part of the road needs a dust suppressant placed on it. 
I have contacted the sheriff's office about the problem, and they said they would put one of those little electronic speed boards up, but of course they never have. I can count on one hand how many times I have seen a sheriff vehicle pass by. I pay a huge sum of county taxes every year. I do not see much benefit I gain from these taxes I pay. I do not feel that I should have to pay for a dust suppression to rectify the problems caused by other people's ignorance. We do not want this road paved. We just want to dust suppress and apply to the old, worn-out gravel. I'm sure this part of Mystic Road, due to all the recreational and commercial factors, has much more vehicle traffic than that infamous South Rochford Road. The last time I saw a vehicle counter on the lower paved portion of the road was during a, a time of much reduced traffic. I urge commissioners to come out onto the road at their risk to observe the problems we have. I have adopted two miles of this road to clean up the roadside litter discarded by the ignorant populace, and it seems that the county could reciprocate by adding a little dust control. Thank you for addressing our concerns, Mr. Kenneth Harkins. Thank you, Holly. <clears throat> Mark, you handed out a piece of paper earlier in the meeting related to this about the costs and you had some numbers with all my paperwork I misplaced it I don't have it in front of me but I have you worked with uh, this before this item from Kenneth Harkins have you oh Mark Shock Bennington County Highway um, what was the question Mr. Mr. LaCroix you handed out a, a piece of paper earlier with some information on uh, here we go <clears throat> with the recommendation with some of the numbers that you've given on the South Rochford uh, Deerfield yes. Road north of Rochford and those are you so you have done some some vehicle counts and so forth and I guess I'd like to know what your recommendations is Kenneth wanted this read in front of the Commission whether you know there is no recommendations or actions that are required. It was just he wanted it read up in front of everybody, and and I assume we've gotten some response back. I think I got one from Tom earlier in the week, and this one from you. But have you guys have any recommendations for this? Um, well, I can give you. Do you want to hear some numbers on the ADT sure. and, and sure. things? Okay. Uh, uh, we did take uh, average, average daily traffic counts, or ADT, on uh, Mystic Roads. We take them on most of our roads three uh, every three years. Uh, the last one taken on uh, Mystic Road was August 17th of 2016. Um, on the south end near Deerfield Road, uh, pretty close to where Mr. Hargens lives there, there's a, there was counted 187 vehicles per day. Uh, the speed limit in that area is 50 miles an hour. Our counter showed the average speed, though, is 32 miles an hour. Uh, the 85th percentile speed, and that is what 85% of the vehicles are actually tra traveling, uh, was 38 miles per hour. It showed 1% was trucks. Now, on the other end of Mystic Road, uh, up there by Rochford, uh, it's a little more desolate up there. Uh, the counts showed uh, 94 vehicles per day. Speed limit in that area is 35 miles an hour. Uh, 85th per, or average speed is 29 miles an hour. Um, 85th percentile speed was 36 miles an hour uh, with 4% trucks. There must have been some logging going on up in that area at that time. Um, some history on, on dust to present in Pennington County. Uh, back in 2001, uh, it, it was determined that residents that request dust to present uh, would pay for the cost of the material. Before that, uh, Pennington County did do some, apply some dust to present at, at no cost. And uh, that cost at the time was 35 per, 35 cents per lineal foot, uh, cost of the materials. In 2008, uh, there had been some budget cuts, uh, budget reductions for the highway department. Uh, it was asked by the department to uh, 
increased the cost because the cost of materials had gone up to 55 cents per gallon um, in that time, seven year time frame. The commission came back and asked about the labor costs and the equipment costs involved with adding dust suppressant. Uh, so those were figured out. They, uh, and uh, the dust, current dust abatement policy was signed in 2008. Um, and it says the cost will be based on the price per lineal foot to be determined by the county's annual bid price for dust suppressant and average labor and equipment cost to apply. So since then, uh, there have been calculations done each year on the that included the bid price and, and labor costs. Um, currently, well, in 2001 it was 35 cents, 2008, 55. 2018, when we calculate in the equipment, cost of the material has gone up to 96 cents per gallon for uh, magnesium chloride that's used for the dust suppressant. Uh, our, our calculated cost in 2018 is $1.50 per lineal foot. Uh, that includes, uh, typically we, we go out the day before application and prep the road with a, a water tanker and a motor grader and two operators. And then uh, if it does not take a full tanker load, which typically it does not, people have smaller areas um, that they want done, we have to take our water truck out there and, and apply the, the material. So it's a, a calculated cost of $1.50 a foot is our current policy. Mark, I got a little confused reading this because I don't know what, you know, the square footage of the road and how long it is and all that stuff. Because you're talking the cost, so the homeowners would have to pay the cost of the chemical. Did I, did I get that? Cost of, did, cost, yeah. of cost, the cost of everything. The yep. cost of everything. Policy says the cost of material, labor, and equipment. Okay. Mr. Chair. Mr. DeSanto. If we if we were to put uh, dust suppressant for 200 feet, basically, in front of his house, it cost us three. It cost him three hundred dollars. Okay. Based on a 22 foot wide road, right? Yes. Um, we we don't have a lot of requests now for for dust control, dust abatement. But uh, there are certain areas uh, similar to this uh, where there's, uh, if you want to call it a housing development out on the gravel roads. And uh, we have seen in the past where they will group together and have that area through the houses. In this case, uh, I measured it out just on rapid map about eight tenths of a mile. And um, landowners have split that cost amongst themselves. Uh, I don't know if Mr. Hargan has talked to his neighbors and, and considered that. I... Okay. Well, I appreciate the work that the staff has done on this. I think uh, he's been in contact and he, and he feels like he needed to have it read in front of the commission. If, Chair, Chairman. If it's the owners that need to make the cost uh do it up front, that's what I would be in favor of, but I think uh, as a priority need, I don't think it's there, but I'll, Ms. Hancock, I'll recognize Ms. Well, bottom line is, he needs to know what the cost sharing is when yeah. you get back with them. I don't think there needs to be a motion made. It's no. just that it's, it's good information for him to know, and then, Mark, if we could get back to him and tell him, you know, how much of this road are you wanting to cost share? Because that's what we do in the county. And maybe after that, he doesn't want to have any more discussion, or maybe he wants to talk to his neighbors and see if they want to help. So, yeah, I will. It's I did talk line. with Mr. So, Hargens a couple of years ago, okay. um, but I will. We, I will call him again. So, Mark, Mr. sorry, one, one more thing, sir. How far or how long is Mystic Road? 
what's the length? It's a little over 10 miles. There's two segments, a little over 10 miles total, I believe. Thank you, sir. Mr. Chair. Mr. Gusecto. Mark's saying that about it's about eight tenths of a mile what we'd have to cover, which is 4,224 feet times a buck fifty. Six thousand three hundred thirty-six dollars is what it would run. I believe he said there was set six residents in that eighth of a mile stretch. Uh, so it's thousand fifty-six a piece. It's significant. It, it, it's a cost. Yes. Well, if you could reach out and just give him those numbers, I'm sure he doesn't. That's not what he probably wants to hear. But at least he has a starting point. Thanks, Mark. Thank you. Uh, it looks like motion to bring 19A off the table. Dang it. It's moved and seconded to bring 19A off the table. All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Judge. Thank you. Uh, and thank you for accommodating my schedule. I appreciate that, Commissioners. I was out when you were doing your regular budget meetings and was unable to be in town. I had some meetings in Sioux Falls at that time, so I appreciate you taking me out of turn, as it were. Um, I primarily want to answer any questions that you might have as to the proposed uh, numbers that we gave you for your budget for fiscal year 19. Um, I will tell you, we've done our utmost to try to keep this as flat as possible from 17 based upon the projections that we see. I think a couple of issues are important to consider. Uh, one of which, as I promised you a couple of years ago, that we were working with the Chief Justice to get a better handle on court appointments altogether. Uh, I volunteered for Pennington County to participate in a new pilot project for a new court appointed attorney application form. We are in the middle of that pilot project. We'll have some results sometime toward the end of the summer as to allowing judges to have some better information as to who may qualify. Um, quite honestly, we don't have any particular problem with those folks that uh, have no income, and we don't have any particular problem with those folks that have fairly significant income who make application. It's the folks in the mi middle that on occasion we struggle for, and this is designed to help us as the judiciary get, just get better information in terms of uh, who might bear the brunt of the cost for uh, those attorneys' fees. A couple of the things I think are important to consider moving forward that I think speak to uh, information you've probably already heard from both the Office of the State's Attorney and the Office of the Public Defender, but the numbers of folks that uh, we assign cases to has increased dramatically over the course of the past couple of years. Anecdotally, my expectation is, is that what we're seeing is that increase in substance abuse in our community is causing an increase in court appointments. That tends to be a group of folks that have an inability to pay for their lawyers. And as those numbers have gone up, uh, while our general overall case filing numbers have gone up at a smaller pace, the number of court appointments themselves have gone up at a rather dramatic pace. And as a result, I think that's where we're seeing this. But just so you know, uh, as some examples, uh, what we've seen in terms of actual court appointment numbers, uh, those have increased to about 8,677 actual court appointment numbers over the course of 2016. Uh, Public Defender's Office has roughly doubled in about a six-year period. Um, those that we work with, Dakota Plains, who you also have a contract with, have gone up. Uh, not quite that percentage, but from 300 to approximately 500. And I think what we're seeing is from a period of uh, 2010 through 2016, the actual number of court-appointed attorney cases in Pennington County have risen from 3,300 to 5,700. So that tells you the story about why this budget for you has increased, where those numbers are going. As indicated in our budget proposal, we're trying to keep this as relatively realistic and flat as we possibly can. We've got slight increases in terms of actual numbers, but again, relatively flat in both uh, court-appointed attorney's costs for general criminal cases and for those abuse and neglect cases for which we are required to appoint attorneys. And uh, we've reduced 
the budget request number and our court administration costs, that's juror fees, witness fees, those sorts of things, based upon the fact that uh, state's attorney's office is elected to take a couple of capital cases off the table, and those have some of those ancillary costs that are particularly high, and so we've tried to recognize that and reduce that for you. Uh, but with that, I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have. Thank you. <clears throat> Did any commissioners have any questions? Mr. Chair. Mr. DeSanto. Um, I've always been curious, so I'm going to ask now. Uh, when, when it comes to these witness fees, what exactly are we paying for? Are we paying them like an hourly to be here? Are we paying for the travel? It, 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 it depends. Um, the regular statutory witness fee is a da daily fee plus mileage. For the kinds of cases in which experts are required to be appointed, you have to pay their actual costs. Uh -huh. okay. So that changes a little bit based upon the category of witness. The bulk of those are, you know, we call on average about 400 jurors a month. Okay. And so we pay juror fees for each of those. So the bulk of those fees are actually going to be your, your juror fees, but we do have some of those other things as well. So what you're saying is when it comes to witnesses, you know, if we're paying for a doctor to come in and testify, it's going to cost more than it is to pay for Correct. me. Okay. Any, any other questions for the judge? Would they, you came in late, so the direction that uh, the commission gave was uh, reduce the tax burden by, you know, when you see that revised sheet to... Uh, 0.197 to raise your cash reserves. So the direction was given to reduce it down to 1.97 with the tax burden. And then we're, our next meeting's July 17th. Am I correct? July 10th. Oh, July 10th. I was trying to shoot for a little bit longer out. But, Tuesday. Yeah. But yeah, so our next meeting's July 10th. So if, we, if there's any problems with with uh, the direction you're going to get from Cindy Moeller, that's going to be the time to to have a discussion with the board. Understood. Thank, Thank you all. Judge. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. I'm happy for it. You too. I like your tie. Nice. <laughs> I was going to say that. That's cool. Okay. Committee reports. Ms. Hadcock? Actually, for this month, not yet. I okay. still have my um, boards to go to, so they're next week. Okay. Anybody else? I think we're good for today. Okay, so. Motion to approve the vouchers. Dang it. I moved and seconded to approve the vouchers of 239-02072. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor and keep us saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. One no from Mr. Faraby. Any items from the public? Seeing none. Item 24, Executive Sessions, SDCL 1-25-2. We need a motion to go in for personnel issue, SDCL 1-25-2-1, and contractual and pending litigation personnel to go to CL 125-2-3. In my motion. And moved to go into executive session with those. Second. And seconded by DeSanto. Any further discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Go into executive session. Motion to come out of executive session. My motion. Second. Second. Moved by Agak, seconded by Buscrude. All in favor, say aye. 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 I have a motion, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Buscrude. To raise our human resource director, John Morrill, from uh, I think what he is now is a grade 24, step two, raise him up to a grade 24, step four. Okay. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Um, Look for a motion to adjourn. adjourn. Move to adjourn. Second. Seconded by Hancock. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. We're adjourned. See you next Tuesday.